So when we go back to verse 12, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. Those rewards in heaven that are waiting for us, that are waiting for those that spend their life doing activities, inventing things, you know, even playing stuff, or using the things in this world to glorify them. The next part of James, anybody know the next part of James? Anybody know where Mr. Steve left off? Pastor Steve, you know, you know where he left off? Phoebe? All right, so what verse are we going to start on? Uh, Nine. Nine, I'm just checking. All right, very good. So we're going to start on nine. So if you have your Bibles there, whatever, you can turn to James chapter one, or you can turn in your book. It's right there. Uh, No, it may not be in your book. You can turn in your book. All right, anybody know what page they need to be in their book? Page 13. All right, everybody get page 13 in your book? All right, so page 13, can you find it, Raphael? Page 13. Judy, you want to sit up here and help them find it? All right. So James chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 9. And we're going to go all the way to 15, but we're not going to do it just yet. Okay? All right, so let's read, starting at verse 9. We're going to read 9 through 11. Sebastian? 13. Can you find 13? Can you find 13? All right. All right, so starting with verse 9. Everybody got it? You know, I'm just happy they're interested in wanting to get there. All right. Here we go. Starting at verse 9. Let the lowly brother boast in his exultation and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes so also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. So we're going to stop there right now. And I want you to consider something as we consider this first idea of are you rich or are you poor? Poor. Right? Are you rich or are you poor? Well, you know, and you may not know yet, but let's work through it, and then you maybe you can decide, right? So... So everybody can see these, this group here, right? So what's your first reaction when you see this picture? What do you think? They're poor, poor right? Probably a good, good reaction. What do you think they eat? Well, we did talk about the prodigal son, right? The prodigal son was poor, and he pretty much would have taken trash, right? So, okay. All right. Maybe they eat. Maybe they eat rice. Something very cheap. Okay. All right. Let's go. So, so let me ask you this. Do you think they get a lot of candy and soda? No. No. Okay. All right. Do you think they have TV? No. Mm, maybe not. Right. 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 That's somebody visiting. It's a good question. Very astute. All right. Now, here's a good question, though, right? Do you think they go to church? No. Maybe. 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 Can we tell by the way they look and whether they go to church or not? No. No. But their church might be not as pretty as ours, maybe, right? But, right? Pastor Jim could probably tell us what some of those churches look like. They're not, they're like huts in some cases. Some of them have no air condition. Can you imagine that? Wow. All right. So, so thinking about that one, now let's go on here. What do you think about this one? What is this picture? 
Wow. That's not my house. Right? Okay. Okay. Listen. Listen. Okay. So, what do you think they eat? Fancy food. Right? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Do you think they have a TV? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, do you think they go to church? Yes. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So, the question is, I don't know, right? Right. Again, does it? If we're rich or poor, does that tell us if we go to church or not? No. No. Right. Okay. All right. So let me ask you this. Do you think God likes people that were in the first picture better or the second picture? What? All right. Okay. Both. Okay. Both. I'm glad to hear you saying that, right? Right? Because it's important. So as we go along here, okay, God doesn't, so right in your book, right? God doesn't consider us differently if we are rich or if we're poor. Okay? So that's the most important thing. Because sometimes we look down at those that are poor, and sometimes we look down on those that are rich. You know, and, and I think all of us are probably somewhere in the middle. All right? And the next thing is, okay. All right? True riches come through what? Right? Thank you. True riches come through the life with God, right? Yes? Right. You took my message already, Leo. You want to come up here and teach now? <laughs> All right. Very good. You guys are astute, right? All right, and that's exactly what I'm saying, right? And we're going to talk a little bit deeper in that, though, okay? All right, and our third point is, this is interesting, right? Sometimes our riches, which we can call our stuff, who has stuff? Who has stuff? You have stuff at home, right? Stuff at home? Sometimes our stuff, right, gets in the way. So we lose focus on the things of God because of our earthly riches and our stuff. So it's interesting, while you guys are still getting this down, you guys almost got it? Yeah. Almost, okay. All right, give me, give me an example of your stuff. What's an example of your stuff? Who's got stuff? Grant, you got stuff? What? Video games? Oh, no. You're still on my message, too. All right? Who else got stuff? Yeah. Legos or toys. Okay. All right. Who else has stuff? Go ahead. Yep. Sports equipment. Man, you guys have a variety of stuff. All right. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. We'll, we'll, we'll do more. All right. So everybody has these stuff here on earth, right? And that may not be, that's not where our riches are, is it? Okay? Right? So the question is, is do our, does our stuff ever distract us from what we should be doing? So here I got to, I'm going to see, okay, so I want you to be perfectly silent on this one. Don't say a thing. And I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you recognize this. See? Oh, man. Picked the right one there, didn't we? Right? Okay. Wow. Nobody knows what this is. All right? Nobody. All right. All right. Put your hands down. Almost everybody. <clears throat> right? Someone tell me what it is. Okay, wait, wait, wait. All right. Tell me, Sebastian. Minecraft, right? <clears throat> okay. So, do you realize, do you realize that, um, you know how many people play Minecraft every month? 
No. Nope. 126 million people. Right? <clears throat> okay, listen, listen. Okay, listen. Do you know? Okay. Now, and I'm betting these numbers, it's not necessarily apples to apples, but I looked up, I just looked up how many people in the U.S. go to church. And that may not even be a good church. It may not be a great number here, right? But they said 37%, which is only like about 100 million, right? Probably a little bit less, you know, going to a real church, right? So more people are playing Minecraft than going to church. That's a problem, right? Right? That's a problem. All right. All right, listen. Listen. Do you know, who, who here is 12 or under? Raise your hand. 12 or under. Okay. So you know what the statistics say? Listen. Listen. Put your hands down. The statistics say that kids 12 and under, between 8 and 12, play video games like five hours a day. All right? All right, now, now, let's go to the teenagers. Who's here a teenager? All right? Statistics say teenagers play like seven to ten hours a day. All right? Okay. Listen. Listen. Now, this may not, that may not be you. And if it's not you, thank your parents. All right, listen. Shh, turn around. Turn around. Turn around and listen, Isaac. Right? That may not be you, but we're spending more time playing video games than we are thinking about God. Right? We play video, more people play video games than they go to church. I'm betting that's actually true. Right? So, so think about that. Now again, I'm not telling you not to play video games, but listen to your parents. When your parents say, hey, I'm going to limit you to an hour a day, there's good reason for that. Because they want you to focus on what? Focus on God, focus on church, which because what's the, the things of God, the things of the church are our riches, our true riches, not our stuff, right? I should have labeled this riches, not stuff, because the stuff is on earth, the riches are where? In heaven, right? So if our mind is not on Christ all the time, we're not concentrated on our riches. So... All right, so i got a couple more things here. All right, so wealth. So in your book there, wealth is not in things, but in eternity with God. I think I said that more than once. Probably for good reason, right? And the second thing, earthly riches are, I think Leo said it, right? Can you read that word, Leo? <laughs> Close? Close? Temporary. Earthly riches are temporary. Heavenly riches are eternal, right? So where do we put our focus? What riches? What riches, though? On the eternal riches, right? And everything you guys were saying was correct as well. So, so it's interesting if you go back to... <clears throat> what? <laughs> All right, let me find it here. Okay. If you go back to verse 11, it says, For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes. Right? You know what that means? The things on the earth will pass away. And so I'm going to show you a little video. I'll let you catch up afterwards. All right? I'm going to show you a little video. Let's see if it works. All right, watch this. Anybody, everybody love a rose? A nice, pretty red rose, right? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that a very pretty rose? You know, that grew. It grows like the things we have, the things we have on earth, right? And some of it's very pretty. But what's going to happen in the end? Right? Let's see what happens. Oh. I think it's already on the way, right? Oh. I, I've seen better ones. All right, shh, just watch. Right? 
And do you think it's getting prettier as it dies? No, it just passes away and becomes what? Anybody know? Yes, dirt, the ground, right? It withers away. The rose withers away. Okay? All right, so the things of this earth, what happens to them? They're going to leave, right? So, so there's lots of people, you know what? Have you guys done anything amazing? What? Have you guys invented something amazing? Yes. I, didn't, I didn't see your name in the history book, right? But you know what? There's also these achievements. You know, I can do great things, but it's how do I, how do I in the process do that, right? And do you think, do you think a thousand years from now they'll remember what I invented? No. What? Okay, well, let's see. Let's see. Let's test you. Who knows? Who is, who is this guy? What did he invent? All right, we got one in the back. Anybody else know? You know? The telegraph. Telephone. Start of the telephone, right? Alexander Graham Bell, right? All right. Let me ask you this one. So you remember him. Who was this one? Who was our first president? All right. Do you, okay, Giovanni? All right, George Washington. Very nice. Okay, so you remember those people, right? They did great achievements, right? Uh, let me ask you this. Who invented 300 uses for the peanut? Oh, we got one in the back, right? Do you know Jeff? No, amazing. Very nice. Very nice. See? So you guys remember some of these guys that invented things. All right? But let me ask you this one. Do you know this person? Ralph Bear? What did he invent? Do you know? So he invented something so amazing and you guys don't even know him. So he's kind of passed away. I mean, he's passed away, right? In the past. He did achieve. He invented video games. Right? All right? All right, how about this one? How about this one? What did he invent? Joseph Gaetti. Something very important. He invented the toilet paper. All right, see? All right, and now let me ask you this. Who invented the chair? You guys are sitting on one. Who invented the chair? Do you remember? I don't even know, right? It was so long ago, it was like the Egyptians or something, right? Maybe he's in the Garden of Eden. Okay, so listen. But the point is, you know. All right, well, listen up. All right, put your hands down. So the key here is as we do things, as we make it through life, right, and as we achieve, maybe, it, maybe we do it in a poor country. Maybe we become rich, right? God looks the same in the sight. But we need to do things in a humble and godly way, right? Because many of these people in time, you might be forgotten. Your achievement might be there. So the important thing is to do things for who? For God, right? For Christ, right? So, <clears throat> all right, so in your book there, achievements are important, but we should achieve in how? A humble and God honoring way. All right, well, I'll help you out next time. So, the next thing I want to talk to you about. All right, real quick. Real quick. So, so I hope, so listen, listen, while you're writing, I hope many of you achieve, right? I hope many of you achieve, but I hope you achieve in a way that honors God, right? All right. So as we go on, if you don't get it, you can see me afterwards. I'll get it to you. 
So in this case, let's go on to verse 12. So we're going to go back to James, verse 12. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. So Pastor Steve talked a lot last night about that we're going to have what? Trials. We're going to have trials in our life, right? Okay? So, <clears throat> so what's this crown of life? And so I put it up here. The crown of life, it's eternal blessings for remaining steadfast under trial. So what does it mean to remain steadfast? Anybody know? What does it mean to be, remain steadfast? Staying strong, right? Staying, you mean you're putting your, your entire effort into it. And that's why I put these pictures up here. So think about these guys here in the picture. Do you think they're giving it their all? All right, so the first one with the crown, well, let's just go to the, the guy on top of the mountain. Do you think it was easy to get to the top of the mountain? <coughs> right? He's given it, he had to give it everything he had to get there. And what do you think about this runner? Is he going to win? Yeah. Right? Has anybody ever dove onto concrete after running as fast as you can? No, it's not a good idea, right? Right? He gave it all that he could. And so as we approach these trials, we need to give everything we can. Right? No, probably not, right? So then I think of, okay, let's think of people that have, in the Bible, that have endured trials. And I put up a couple of here that you're going to recognize. Peter. So Peter denied Jesus three times. Because why? He was afraid. He was afraid of his life. Right? So he went through a very difficult time when Jesus had been taken in, captured. And then they came to Peter and said, Hey, aren't you one of Jesus' disciples? And Peter said, N Not me. Why? Because he was scared. Can you imagine the living? And he was, he was fearful for his life. And then Paul, it's amazing, Paul spells it out in 2 Corinthians um, chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, and says that all the things that he went through. So he went through, and Paul says, Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the 40 lashes less one. So 39 lashes, five different times. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. He was floating at sea. Then he talks about dangers of robbers. Dangers in the city. Dangers in the wilderness, danger from false brothers, and even danger from his own people. Sometimes his own people wanted to kill him. But, and then Paul also endured hunger. How many of you have gone hungry? Not the, oh, hmm. Probably not, probably not to the extent that Paul did, right? And then Paul even had to escape in a basket, right? to save his life in, down the wall, right? So, so hopefully we're not going to endure such intense trials that Paul had, right, or that Peter went through, but you could. And we need to think about now how do we, how do we prepare ourselves? Because the only way we can remain steadfast under trial is if we prepare ourselves, right? And how do we prepare, prepare ourselves? By coming to camp, by going to church, by be read, being in our Bible, right? So, so what trials do you endure? So if it's not like Paul, I threw some up here, right? It might be what? Who thinks school is difficult? All right? Who thinks maybe making friends might be difficult? Right? 
So maybe you move often. I moved often as a kid. That wasn't, uh, um, who, who's, who's got a trial of moving often? Trying to get back in, yeah, see? All right? Medical issues, right? We know Hunter, right? Need to keep praying for Hunter. We got Eduardo, right? Can you imagine the trial that um, Hunter and then even his family is going through? All right? Money, family, religious persecution. Thankfully, we don't, we live in a, a free country, although that seems to be changing over time and sometimes very quickly, right? We don't want to go into that stuff. Right? So, all right. So that's some of the trials that you may face. Does anybody recognize, you guys recognize some of these? <clears throat> and then you can think of your own. I think I left you a spot in the book. You can write some of your own trials that you might be going through. All right? And if you want to share that with me later, we can, we can pray for you. So, but then it also talks about our temptations, right? So, all right, put the toys away. So it talks about our temptations. What tempts us to get away from God, right? Does any of these look familiar? Mm, I'm going to skip my devotions. I'm going to, I just don't have time. I'm going to skip my prayer time because I don't have time. I'm going to skip church because I don't have time, right? Now, and then we also skip out on doing our homework well or our schoolwork well. Anybody do that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? And then I just put this, I put this other one in here, inappropriate what? Inappropriate movies, games, behavior, <coughs> right? So sometimes we watch things we shouldn't watch. Sometimes we get involved with friends we shouldn't get, well, let's just call them kids, we shouldn't get involved with, right? Okay? Just all these things that we need to, that are there, because who wants to distract you? Satan. And Satan, what is Satan going to distract you with that we learned earlier? <clears throat> Sin. Earthly stuff. Thank you, Leo. Earthly stuff, right? So, and I put down, I left you a gap there so you can put, what are your temptations? Where does your struggle lie? Because the sooner you recognize it, what the struggle is, the sooner you can say, okay, Lord, and pray about it and say, how can I, how can I make this better? So, <clears throat> all right, so, and what we want to do, like I talked about, we want to be prepared to fight temptation and conquer our trials, because we want to go through these trials in a steadfast way, right? In a way that's honoring to God, but in a way that we're going to, we, we, where we truly want to do the things of God. Yep. What's up? Oh, is there a blank? There may not have been a blank. There is a blank? Okay. All right. All right. Well, whatever you got in the book, you can try to fill it in. Oh, this. Often. What are we going to do? Pray often, right? All right. So the first thing, so again, back to praying, right? You know, all the, all the counselors get up early in the morning and pray for you guys at 6.30 in the morning because we want to pray for your health, but most of all, we want to pray that you put your trust and faith in God and that you don't let these earthly stuff distract you, right? So, and we're going to build, second thing, we're going to build godly defenses by being in the Word and in church, Okay? How can you fight people that, and how can you fight the urge to watch something if you're not, if you're not reading your Bible, if you're not building these defenses up to say, you know, Satan, you can just go the other way because I'm going to do the right thing today. And then the last thing, 
Prepare to please who? Please God and not man. Right? <coughs> All right, so our last thing. So three steps we often take, right? Because the last thing here is verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So we're going to look at three things that many of us do. First of all, we willingly sin, right? Because the sin doesn't come from God. Second thing is now we make excuses for our sin. And then the third thing, when the consequences of that sin catches up to us, who do we blame? We blame God. We may blame other people, right? So we shift the blame outside of us. Right? So we're going to go back. Since, since you guys know on the voice, I like to tell stories, right? So we're going to go back to the Garden of Eden. And in the Garden of Eden, <coughs> God told Adam one thing. You know what he told him? Don't eat of the tree of good and evil. If you do, you will surely die. Surely die, right? Is what it says, right? Which goes along with our verse there. Okay? <clears throat> now, Adam was alone, right? And so Adam, so then God created who? Eve, right? <clears throat> and I'm going to read there. It says, Now, the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field. So, do you think the and when you get these urges to do these, to watch these things, or play these games that are inappropriate, or, or to just skip out on doing something, right? <clears throat> Remember, the devil is crafty. He's going to find things to your mind to think about, to try to distract you, right? Probably maybe you're distracted right now, all right? But we'll see. All right, so he was crafty, more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did you actually say you shall not eat of the tree in the garden? That's what the serpent said. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said, you will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be open. See? This is the serpent being crafty, trying to give you an excuse. Oh, no, no, God don't really mean that. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, now the woman's like, oh, I can be like God. Oh, and there's some great looking fruit. And that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate it. And what did she do right there? She sinned, right? She sinned, right? And she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Now, so, so Adam and Eve, did they both have a choice to eat of that fruit? They did, right? 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 But next thing, they heard God walking along, <clears throat> and what did they do? They hid, right? <clears throat> but God called for them and said, uh, where are you? Can you imagine? And then he said to Adam, have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? And Adam said, the woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate it. So who did he blame? Eve. Eve. He blamed Eve. 
But who made the choice to eat? Adam, right? So we can't go shifting our blame to somebody else, right? We can't go shifting. When we, when we do an act, it's by our own free will or by our will. So, but then Eve, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, who did the woman blame it on? The serpent. the serpent, right? So they're just blaming, right? But yet, it's their, it's their will, it's their act that did it. So, all right? And of course, their consequence is what? They got thrown out of the garden? And now they're actually going to physically die. So that's still true. And in one sense, he blamed God because Adam said it was Eve, and who gave, God, who gave Eve to Adam? God did, right? So now he's blaming God. So, so we talked about temptations in your life, right? Whether it's not getting to church, not listening, not paying attention, not doing what your parents say, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> but then, then we make excuses, right? So this is just real life us, right? We make excuses. You know, anybody ever watched a movie and said, you know what? I know there's some bad words in there, but I won't really hear them. I could just ignore those, right? Anybody ever said, I can unsee that later? Isn't that kind of our stance? I don't need to worry about that, right? You know, or, I'll catch on about my schoolwork tomorrow. No worries, I'll get it tomorrow. And then we end up skipping it, right? I'm too busy to go to church, right? These are our... Now, <clears throat> so it's not easy. So we saw Paul earlier, right? So Paul had all those trials. Paul had all those trials, and yet Paul even struggled with sin, just like we do. And if you go to Romans chapter 7, 15, Paul says, you can see he's, it's, he compares sin to a war waging in you. For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. For I have the desire to do what is right. Paul wanted to do what is right but not the ability to carry it out. Anybody ever feel that? For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep doing. Right? There's something in your life that you just keep doing that's just a struggle. When I want to do right, evil lies close at hand, for I delight in the law of God in my inner being. But I see my members, another law, waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. And then Paul puts it pretty clearly, wretched man that I am. You know that sinful side of us? Wretched are we. Who will deliver me from this body of death? You know, and then we, so we go through this struggle, we go through this sin, and then anybody had consequences from your sin? You know, like uh, spanking from your parents maybe? You know, nobody had that. I think I had that a few times, right? <clears throat> Somebody gets hurt, right? Somebody gets hurt. Um, you know, you find you need help, but you realize that all your friends are online, right? That's a bit of a problem. And I can't get a good job. So you get to where you're 25 years old and you're struggling to get a good job, but what might have caused that? Laziness. I didn't care about schoolwork. I didn't listen to my parents, right? All those things add up. And who do we start blaming? God. We start blaming God. Say, God, why can't I get a... Now we start praying, right? God, why can't I get a good job? Why didn't you find me a better job? But now is the time to start. Now is the time to start your life doing the things of God, Right? So, <clears throat> so when we realize when we, when we choose to sin, we should be willing to accept the consequences. And going back to our text, right, sin leads to what? 
What does it say there? To death. Sin leads to death, right? And it goes right back to Adam. Don't eat of the garden of good and evil. Or Paul said, the wages of sin is death. So when we go back to verse 12, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. Those rewards in heaven that are waiting for us, that are waiting for those that spend their life doing activities, inventing things, you know, even playing stuff or using the things in this world to glorify Him rather than just to distract us from Him. So, so I say this, remain in God, strive to be Christ-like, persevere through the trials, and re reap the blessings and the rewards. Be prepared for what is to come and don't wait until you get in a trial to prepare yourself. You know what? That's where we struggle is we wait till we get into the trial and we're not prepared. And then how does that trial go? Can we remain steadfast or we just we might melt away, struggle? And that's where God might use other people to pick us up. But again, now is the time. Now is the time.